This video is called Making Your Own Doors and Windows, and it's for Chapter 5 of Google SketchUp for Dummies. Okay, uh, as the title implies, this video is about making your own components for use um, in poking through surfaces or just faces in Google SketchUp. What I'm going to do here is just make a little box, and what we're going to do is demonstrate how to make some sort of a penetration in this surface. Um, common kinds of things like this are windows and doors. So let's make a window here and then what we're going to do is make a component that's going to automatically cut through the surface and any other surface that we uh, that we put it on. Before we start here what I'm going to do is open up some of the other components that we have uh, by default in SketchUp. So if I go to Window, Components, and then look inside the Architecture Library, there's already a selection of components in here. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom um, you'll actually see some windows in here. So let's, what I'm going to do is open this window and I'm just going to plunk it down here on the surface there and then zoom in and you'll see what I'm talking about here. So what I've got, if I just deselect that, this is a window and if you look real carefully you'll see that we're actually able to see through this window into the inside of the building. In fact if I zoom back and then take off the, the, the ceiling you'll see what I mean. Um, well, maybe. Anyway, it looks like the glass on this window is actually colored gray, which is why it looks like there's still the roof there. But regardless, what you can do is um, stick these components on surfaces, and they automatically cut a hole for themselves. If we go inside and I show you what this looks like, you'll see that it's actually a three-dimensional component that's just sitting on that two-dimensional face, automatically cutting a hole through it. Now, the cool thing about this kind of component is when I take the Move tool and actually move this thing, you'll see that no matter where I move it, I'm still cutting a hole. If I zoom in on that and look through it, you'll see that we're still looking, we're still, we've still got a hole cut in the, in the surface, but it didn't leave the hole where it was. Um, moreover, if I take the select tool, select this, and just delete it, it takes the hole with it. So to create um, kind of really flexible openings in walls, you can create doors and windows using components, which is what I'm about to show you how to do. Okay, so it's pretty simple. What we're going to do is take the rectangle tool, and I'm just going to draw an opening right here on this wall. Okay, just like that. Now what I'm going to do is cut away the face on the inside to create a hole. Okay, so I'm going to select this face, and then I'm just going to right-click and say Erase. Okay, and there's other ways that I could have erased that as well. I could have just hit delete on my keyboard, or I could have even gone up to edit and delete in the edit menu. But um, I think right clicking is kind of a nice way to work, so that's how I did that. Okay, now that I've got a hole defined by four edges right here on my wall, I can go ahead and select all four of the edges that define that hole right there. So what I've done is select all four of those edges, and then I'm going to right click on one of the edges that I have selected and I'm going to choose Make Component. So, again, I select all four edges, right-click on one of them, and say Make Component. And the Make Component, or New Component, dialog box appears. Now what I'm going to do is just name this... Uh, I'm trying to make a window, so let's just type in Window. I'm going to leave the description box blank because um, I don't really care about describing it right now. If I were making a model with a whole bunch of windows, I'd probably want to describe this in some way so that I didn't have to do quite as much work in describing um, the, the name up here. But anyway. Other options. Under Alignment, I'm going to make sure that Glue to Any is selected. What this means is when I grab a component from my component uh, dialog box and stick it on a wall, it's automatically going to glue to that surface that I put it on. It's going to help me modeling once I have those components in my model. Um, I'm going to leave Cut Opening selected right here. Cut Opening is what allows it to automatically cut a hole wherever you place it. Pretty simple, actually. I don't have to set the gluing plane because I've already done that by cutting out a hole um, when I was modeling. If I hadn't already cut that hole, let's say I was making a window out here in space, and then I wanted to stick it, I'd have to go through the process of setting the gluing plane. But that's a little bit complicated. I think it's easier just to build the window where you want it, basically, and then kind of tweak from there. And then, really importantly, we're going to choose Replace Selection with Component, so that the thing that I selected actually becomes an instance of this component called Window. And I'm going to hit Create. All right, so what I've got now is I've got a component that's actually cutting a hole through my surface, and it's just about the simplest window you could possibly imagine. It's just four edges defining a hole. But it behaves the way that other more complicated window component we did 
um, that, that we dragged in before behaves. Watch, when I drag this window around, you'll see it actually takes its hole with it. And if I go ahead and actually delete that thing, just like this, you'll see it took its hole with it altogether. I'm going to go to Window and Components, and then hit this In Model uh, button. It looks like a little house. And when I do that, it's going to show me all the components in my model. I had Bryce when I opened. I deleted him, but I didn't purge the components yet, so that's why he's still there. I had placed a window, but I deleted that too. And here's the window that I just made. So I can drag out some more copies of this if I want. In fact, I could put one on the bottom surface, and you'll see that um, as I work here, I can, I can drag instances of these cutting windows all over the place if I want to. Um, what I'm going to do here is hit uh, the little library options fly out, and I'm going to say purge unused. And that's going to take away all the instances of the components that I'm not actually using anymore in my model. That's a little tip to help you keep your uh, models nice and clean. Let's get rid of the components dialog box. I'm going to get rid of the other instances of this component that I don't want. And let's, let's add some detail to this window now that it's here, right? And I want to maybe put a frame around it, stuff like that. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do to edit my component now that it's made is I'm going to double click on it. Ready? Click, click. And when I double click, I end up in this world where everything's kind of shaded. And all I can really see very clearly is my component. So pretty simple, actually. All right. Now that that's selected, uh, or I should say in edit mode, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to select all four of those edges, and I'm going to take my offset tool up here. It's right next to rotate, uh, next to orbit, so it's between rotate and orbit. It looks like kind of the, the rings of Saturn. So I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to offset a little frame away right there. Okay. Now, when I did that, notice what happened. My window actually closed up, right? And that's kind of annoying because I wanted that to be an opening. So what do I do now? Well. All I have to do is go back, double click to edit again, and I'm just going to use the line tool to kind of open up this middle opening a little bit again. So all I have to do is, once once this uh, once these lines are thin, I know that this is a rectangle inside of another rectangle, and then I'm going to take the select tool and select that opening, and just delete it again. That time I used the delete key on my keyboard instead of right clicking and saying delete. And what I've got now is a frame that's sticking all the way around. Let's use push pull. Just kind of pull that out a little ways. Uh, maybe I'll bring this down. There we go. And I don't know. Let's get the Move tool and maybe move this down to create sort of a windowsill opening. Um, let's see. Now that I'm in here, let's take the Offset tool and just offset a little edge around there and uh, use the Push-Pull tool like this to just pull this out a little ways. Oops. Let's pull it out just about it's hard to do because it's trying to keep it's always trying to snap to things. So sometimes you just have to orbit around and zoom in to kind of get the level of accuracy that you really want when you're working like this. Let's do one more thing. Uh, okay, so I've got this three-dimensional window and it's kind of stuck there. Um, let's add a pane of glass to this thing. So what I'm going to do is double click to edit this thing again. Now, I've got an opening, but what I want to do is, is add uh, a transparent material in there so that there's kind of glass like there was in the component that we did at the beginning of this video. I'm going to take the line tool and just reiterate one of the edges where the opening is. And when I do that, notice I've created a surface that's closed now. So I've got a face where that opening used to be. And what I'm going to do is just click on that face, and I'm going to select the paint bucket tool. And when I select paint bucket, my materials open. And you can see my materials palette is huge right now. I don't need it to be that huge. On a Mac, you're going to hit the little brick. And then you're going to select from the library to get the translucent materials. It's a little simpler, actually, on the PC. You should have a folder uh, on a Windows version of SketchUp called Translucent Materials. And once you open that up, you'll be able to see all your options. What I'm going to do is just kind of hide my colors here and uh, make this dialog box a little bigger. And you'll see that we have some translucent materials. I'm going to pick... Let's see, let's pick, I like this green glass, so I'm just going to paint that green glass right on there. And that's a translucent material, meaning I can see through it now. So I've got green glass on this window, and that's really as simple as it is. Let's close up the materials dialog box and grab components again. And here I've got that component. Let's just kind of stick another one there and, I don't know, one over here. It's pretty simple.